Hey everybody, it's InnoVision, and I've been getting a ton of questions of which one's better, Steam OS or Bazai OS. There are several reasons why one may choose Bazai OS over Steam OS and vice versa, and a lot of it really does come down to your personal preference. In today's video, not only will I share how to dual boot Bazai OS with Windows 11 by adding Bazai to your existing Windows installation, I will share with you the motivation of why you may choose Bazai OS over SteamOS. And the cherry on top is that this method works on any gaming handheld or gaming PC that supports Bazai OS. Stick around, cause you don't wanna miss any of it. If you're enjoying my how-to guides and handheld related content, be sure to like the video and subscribe. That way you get that notification as soon as a new video comes out. As we get started, I would like to motivate why you may choose Bazai OS over SteamOS. Now I'm still in the very early stages of my performance testing comparing Bazai OS with SteamOS, and my preliminary findings are showing that at least on the Z1 Extreme APUs, SteamOS does have a distinct performance advantage. There'll be more details to come, but I wanna really double check my calculations and make sure everything's correct. But there's a couple truly authentic advantages that Bazai OS has over SteamOS. First and foremost, Bazai OS typically supports more hardware and gets updates more frequent. SteamOS has a slower moving release train. And so for newer handhelds like the Lenovo Legion Go 2 or your Xbox Ally devices, Bazai supported those like pretty much within hours of those devices being released. The primary reason why I would choose Bazai OS over SteamOS personally would be because Bazai OS supports Secure Boot. There are several games that have anti-cheat that require Secure Boot under Windows. For example, the Call of Duty games require Secure Boot under Windows 11 in order to play multiplayer due to the strict anti-cheat mechanism. And unfortunately, if you leave Secure Boot enabled and then try to boot into SteamOS, you can potentially clobber your SteamOS installation and have to reinstall the boot manager and it can get messy. This is a big feather in Bazai OS's cap. You can enable Secure Boot during the installation process and freely dual boot between Windows and Bazai. I personally believe it's very important that Valve fixes this issue if they want the Steam box to be successful. This is something that they're gonna have to figure out and I don't know that it's gonna be very easy to, to fix. A lot of it has to do with the nature of Linux. For the installation process, I highly recommend using a supported USB dock with a mouse and keyboard and a Bazai OS USB installation media. All right, let's get started. In order to create our Bazai OS installation media, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is navigate to bazite.gg and once we're on the page we're gonna have to select the appropriate disk image so in my video i'm using the og legion go with the detachable controllers so i'm going to scroll down to this section to select your hardware and i'm going to pick this one for lenovo legion go but if you're using a desktop or laptop pc just be sure to pick the appropriate image here and so i'm going to go with this one and now it's asking which desktop environment we would like to use I would like to use KDE's desktop environment because that's similar to what SteamOS uses. And then now we're gonna download it. It's also called Bazai Deck, and it should take a few minutes to download based on your internet connection speed. All right, so our disk image has finished downloading. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is either launch Rufus or Belina Etcher to go ahead and write out the disk image. So I'm gonna use Belina Etcher, which I already have installed here. We're gonna go to select file. Bazite Deck Stable. And I already have my USB storage media hook, which is USB 3 flash media to make the write a little bit faster. All right, so I've selected my USB storage device and I'm gonna click Start. And depending on the speed of your USB storage media, the next step could take anywhere between five and 20 minutes. All right, so Belina Etcher is done writing out the disk image and it's gonna take a few minutes just to verify the disk image wasn't corrupted. I suggest letting this run. And so you can see here, it's gonna take just a little under four minutes. All right, it is done flashing. We can safely remove our installation media and we're ready to boot off of it. First things first, we're gonna want to free up some disk space so we can install Bazite. Go to start, go to the search bar and type in computer management. 
and we're going to want to go to disk management over here click on it and so we're going to click on our C drive and we're going to right click on it and go to shrink volume and it takes a little bit for it to load and once it's loaded it's going to ask you how much you want to shrink the volume by in megabyte however much you shrink it by is going to create whatever amount of space is left over and that amount of space that's left over is where you're going to install bazite so it starts off by default taking the maximum amount of free space I'm just going to reduce it to zero here and then click shrink and the result should be around like a terabyte or 900 gigs yeah so we've got 997 gigs that's going to go to bazite and that's it from here we're going to boot into the bazite installation and then carry on from there and so now if we refresh here we'll see we only have 200 gigs of free space left all right, so we have our Legion Go powered off and our Bazite installation media hooked up via our dock. And so now we're gonna to wanna to boot into the Legion Go's BIOS. So hold volume up and tap the power button, leaving your finger on volume up. And so we're gonna go into BIOS setup and we're gonna to wanna to push this line pus light to the top here, start booting into Bazite. So the screen's rotated here but the topmost option is install Bazite. So we're going to click into that. So we're greeted with the installer. I'm going to proceed with English. Click continue. And I'm going to go into user creation. And the default user is Bazite. I would just leave it as is in case there's certain programs or apps that require that to be the default user. And just go ahead and give yourself a password. If it's something you want and then you'll click done next we're going to want to set up our network and so in my case I'm hooked in via wired Ethernet and so I don't need to configure my Wi-Fi yet but if you needed to you would go into Wi-Fi and then click select network and then click the one you want to connect to and then type in your Wi-Fi password So I'm going to leave Ethernet selected and click Done. And the last thing that we've got to do is configure our disk space. So I'm going to click Advanced Custom GUI, and then click Done. And here we see our free space. So click on Free Space, and then click the little plus icon to add a new partition. And the default that it's going to want to pick is EXT4. We want to change this to EFI, and we want the size to be 300 megabytes. And then the mount point is going to be slash boot slash EFI then click OK and then we're going to click on the remaining free space we're going to click the plus sign and we're going to want this one to be the boot partition we're going to leave it at EXT4 we're going to make it 2 gigs and the mount point is going to be slash boot then we're going to click OK and then with the remaining free space we're going to click on it we're going to click the plus icon and we're going to make it a partition of type BTRFS no mount point and then we're going to click OK now for the last little bit we're going to click on the left here in the BTRFS and we're going to start adding volumes so click plus and for the mount point, we're just going to type slash and then click OK. Then we're going to click plus again. And then for the mount point, we're going to type in slash var, then click OK. And then we're going to click plus one last time. Then we're going to type slash var slash home. And then click OK and now we're going to click done and it's just asking if we want to accept the changes and we do now with everything set up we can click begin installation and this should take like 10 minutes all right it finished and now we can click here to reboot
So you may find yourself in Windows after the installation finished. That's because we're gonna have to go in the BIOS and select to boot off of the Fedora or Bazite boot manager. So we're gonna go ahead and shut down. Now with our Legion Go shut down, we're gonna hold volume up and tap the power button and leave your finger on volume up. All right, so we're gonna go into BIOS setup and you see Fedora is our second boot option. We're gonna to wanna to push that one up to the top and then go over here, click exit, and then save and exit. All right, it's asking if we wanna enroll a secure boot key. So I'm gonna go ahead and click enroll and then click continue. And it's asking, are we sure? And we're gonna type in Universal Blue. And then reboot. And this first boot might take a few minutes. and we're in. And so from this point forward, it's just like setting up Steam OS or Steam Deck. There's no difference. So you'll just continue your onboarding. And now you just log into Steam. And that's it, we're ready to go. One of the nice things about Bazite, it's got an improved sound driver compared to SteamOS. So audio output is a lot better. So I'm logged in, you know, I'm downloading a few games. I just wanna share, by default, Bazite comes with handheld daemon installed for modifying things like controller behavior and TDP settings. So to access handheld daemon, you'll push this button on the back of the right Legion Go controller. And look, it pops up a little menu that shows us the TDP mode. So we can use quiet, balanced performance, and then we can even add custom, which lets us set our own setting. And if you press the Y button, all these options will come up here and we can cycle through them by using the shoulder buttons, the left and right shoulder buttons. So we can change the RGB mode. We can change the type of controller emulation that's used. We can reboot into Windows straight from here. We can check for updates, send a bug report, define our own shortcuts and reset any system settings. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is go into desktop mode. So long press the power button until this submenu pops up and we're gonna go into the option for switch to desktop. All right, so we're in our desktop and we're gonna open a terminal. And so the password for our administrative account is the same password we entered during the installation process. But I wanna share a couple of commands here. If you type in you just space update and then hit enter this will download any of your fedora updates automatically and these would be things that include stuff like security updates things that are specific to the operating system and not the steam client while that's running let's go ahead and take a look at proton plus now it comes pre-installed historically it didn't come pre-installed we type in the word proton in the search bar here and go to proton plus this will allow us to download specific versions of Proton. And the one that I like to keep on hand is Proton GE latest. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and download that right now. All right, so we're all set with Proton GE latest. This is gonna keep downloading any operating system updates. Almost done here.
Okay, so everything's done downloading here. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot. So how many of you out there are playing games that require secure boot for the anti-cheat? Hit me up in the comments section, let me know. I honestly wanna understand how big of a problem this is and see if there are things we can do here at InnoVision Games to help mitigate that. I'm also curious how many of you out there are planning to use Bazite or SteamOS? Which one's your favorite? How many of you would rather just use Windows and not mess with any of these Linux operating systems? Let's have a discussion about it. I'd love to hear all about it. In today's video, we shared with you how to dual boot Bazite OS with Windows 11 and provide you motivation of why you may want to use it over SteamOS. Be sure to hit that like button, hype the video, and subscribe. That way you don't miss all the amazing toys and gaming tips we've got coming down the pipeline.